Investigating Monroe's death is presenting unsolved history with a series of challenges. We can't analyze her tissue samples. Records of phone calls in and out of her house that night aren't available. And the death scene was never properly documented. There was no declaration of a crime scene. There was no preservation of all of the evidence within the residence. This was some kind of almost criminal suppression of an investigation. But what about the evidence that was found? What clues can we uncover 40 years on? Using the remaining photos of her bedroom on August 5th, Unsolved History is recreating Marilyn's death scene as it was found by the LAPD. Uh, we'll start with the bed, which will go against that wall over there. We'll study it under the guidance of modern-day crime scene investigator Stephen Staggs. And on top one of the... So that all looks good. Based on the photographs, uh, her body was positioned uh, as we see it now. Staggs immediately spots the body must have been moved. I believe that the body had been repositioned before the police arrived. Mm -hmm. As an example, uh, the autopsy report revealed there was more lividity in the right cheek than the left. That would indicate that the head was actually in a position like this. Okay. Marilyn's doctors said she had died with a phone in her hand, something else missing from the police photographs. The phone would have been on the floor with the receiver in her hand. However, the position of her hand here uh, does not make sense. Her hand probably was more in a position like this with the receiver here. And then there, the sheets were not covering her when she was found. Well, that paints a much different story than this photograph. Yes. And the fact that her hand is on the phone, what's that tell you? It may indicate uh, if it, in fact, was a suicide that uh, she was making some sort of call for help or to talk to somebody at that moment. Unsolved history has recreated the position in which Marilyn actually died. But there are more clues in this bedroom. First, witnesses said that the door had been locked from the inside. The picture shows from the crime scene that this was a solid core door, a pretty heavy door, right. and a heavy locking mechanism also. In addition to the doorknobs, we have a deadbolt thumb latch on the inside, keyway on the outside. If this, in fact, was closed and locked, it would pose a problem for someone trying to enter the room. Housekeeper Eunice Murray and psychiatrist Dr. Greenson could not have easily broken down the door. And this supports the version of events where Monroe locks herself in the room before committing suicide. In this version, Greenson is forced to break in through the bedroom window with the barbed fireplace poker. But conspiracists claim glass was found outside the room, suggesting that as part of staging the suicide scene, the bedroom window was broken from the inside out. But was it? The key is where the glass fell, inside or outside the window. Steve, this is a reproduction of the window outside Marilyn's bedroom. I'm going to take a poker and punch through this glass, and we're going to see which way it falls. OK. As the barbed poker is pulled back, it causes glass to fall outside the window. Glass outside is not a clear sign that the window was hit from the inside. Another blow to conspiracy theorists. Now, to look inside the room. Well, look at this. Quite a bit. It looks about two-thirds of it went inside. Thanks to one of the grainy bedroom photos, we can faintly make out something never noted in the police report. Glass did indeed fall into Marilyn's bedroom. And in this photograph, we see that there is glass on the floor inside below the window. Well, then there's nothing really suspicious about the way the glass fell. No. Unsolved history has shown there's no compelling reason to doubt witness statements that Marilyn was found dead in her locked bedroom. 
The broken window was most likely smashed from the outside. The autopsy report also cast doubt on the ambulance driver's injection story. No needle marks were found on the body, and the pattern of blood settling suggests Marilyn died face down, not on her back. But there's still a compelling mystery to solve. If Marilyn Monroe died from ingesting 40 or more Nebutal capsules, why was no remnant of them found in her stomach? Could this be a sign of foul play?